Hello, welcome to another Harp at Home workshop with myself, Rachel here, where we're going to learn some tunes on the harp. Um, yay, this is workshop seven of what was going to be a eight week series, but I have a little bit of news for you. I'm going to add an extra week on for just now. I've kind of looked at my diary, worked out that I can fit another workshop in, so I'd be really pleased if you could join me for that. After that, I'm actually going to take a wee break and I am planning on doing the second series. Not totally sure when this will be. I'm imagining it will be in August sometime. So you really need to kind of make sure that you're kind of signed up to receive notification of that. So either subscribe to the YouTube channel or head to heartathome.com and make sure you sign up to the mailing list. Of course, please also look for the Harp at Home Facebook group, um, or Facebook page, I should say, sorry, and make sure you like that so that you'll, yeah, you'll get my updates for when I decide to start the second series. But for just now, we are going to go not to Scotland, not to the Isle of Man for today's tune, but to a beautiful place, a place called Galicia. Galicia is in the northwest of Spain. It's an autonomous region. Really, it kind of has the same relationship um, as Scotland does um, in the UK. So Galicia is a gorgeous place. It's in the northwestern seaboard and it's uh, thought of as being a Celtic region. And I visited there a few years ago, or I've visited there a few times actually. The music that they have there is just amazing. I first got to know Galician music um, as part of my kind of trips and chances to play at the Lorient Inter-Celtic Festival in Brittany. Galicia are always one of the countries that are there and the, oh, the musicians that come, there's always lots of gaitas, lots of Galician bagpipe players, um, singers and dancers. And in fact, actually, I have a little video to show you um, of, this was taken, I think, in, near to the kind of bar at the, at the accommodation in Lorient where we were all just having a wee drink. I think we just arrived in Lorient and yeah, um, a Galic some Galician singers uh, just started singing and then the dancers started dancing. So this will give you an indication of what their music is like. <laughs> Galician singers and you would have heard like a tambourine being played. That instrument is called the panzeretta. It's essentially, yeah, like a Galician pan, uh, tambourine and they use that a lot in their music. There's actually groups that exist that are just singing with panzerettas and so that's an example of that and you would have seen the dancers if you looked right in the corner you would have seen the dancers kind of dancing away. So the other instrument that is very popular in Galician music is the gaita, um, the form of the bagpipes. And there's some amazing players of the gaita, um, Carlos Nunez, you might recognise him, Susana Savien. And um, yeah, we're going to learn a tune that's popular in the gaita, actually. It's a munera. And a munera is a type of Galician dance. It's essentially kind of, I guess, closest to what we would know as a jig. It's in 6-8. So we're going to learn a munera called Munera de Chao. Okay, I hope I got my pronunciation of that day correct. I did get a little bit of help from a pal, I have to say. Um, and yeah, it's a tune that I, I don't know where I found it. I've known it for some years now, actually. I think I might have found it on a website of uh, Galician Music. But I'd really like you to, to take the time, actually, to make sure you look at the links on your PDFs and look at the links in the comments of the YouTube uh, video um, because there's a link to um, a group where there's actually a dancer dancing this. There's also a couple of other links to hear other people playing it, but do take the time to look and watch and enjoy the dance of, yeah, this, this tune, Munera de Chao. So yeah, I guess I better play it to you. <laughs> Thank you. 
you go, that was Munera de Chow. So did you hear that kind of like striking kind of thing that I was doing with my hand? I'm not an expert at that at all by any means, but that's kind of just kind of symbolizing the panzeretta. It's supposed to kind of represent that uh, Galician uh, tambourine. So yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy learning this one. Your PDF has that version. It also has a harmony that you can do on it um, if you want to play with other musicians. Um, and it has an easier version as well. So yeah, let's head over to the green screen and we'll have a go. Okay, we are at the green screen and we are ready to learn this Munera. So the tune is in C major, so my harp is tuned in E flat major and that will simply mean that I need my A levers, my e, e levers and my B levers up. If your harp's tuned to C major, well, you're all good today. <laughs> you don't need any levers on. Okay, I'm going to play you this tune in the first part twice through to get it into your head and then we'll have a go at learning it. Have a listen. first part and handily enough there's a lot of repetition and there's a lot, lot of sequences in this. We are starting off on middle C, really nice starting point for this tune. Three, two, one, third finger in C, second in D, thumb on E, so we're in C, D, E and we're just going to go up that twice. Now for this tune for this first part I'm going to count you in in three. If you have, if you've got the music in front of you, um, you'll notice that it's in 6-8 this tune in Munera, it's kind of a type of jig. Um, but I'm going to count three because I'm going to go, um, I'm going to count like two, uh, one and a half bars. So one, two, three, two, or four, sorry. One, two, three, four, one. Okay. I should really, I guess, be counting one, two, one, but that's just a little bit strange. So I'm going to count to three just to keep you guys straight. Okay. You might think looking at it that actually that first bit should be the first beat of the bar. But um, this is the way that the source material has it written out. And I've also watched people dancing this. They don't, the first step of the dance is on that second kind of pattern there. Okay, so the music is written out to make it obvious where the dancer starts dancing. Okay, so kind of diverging there. Let's get back to the start of the tune though. Three, two, one, on C, D and E. We're going to go up that twice. Have a listen. After three, two, three. Great, again. Two, three. Great. After that, we're going to place four, three, two, one up from C now. So C, D, E, F. We're essentially adding on an F. Have a listen. So I'm going up the four and I'm playing an extra thumb at the top. You could play it with your thumb which is how I've notated it, but you could play it with your second finger if you wanted as well. Up to you for this one. Have a listen to how that will fit in. Up from C, up three, up four, extra F. Let's have a go after three. Two, three. sequence you're going to do exactly the same but starting on the D for our second phrase so that means we're on D E and F we're going to go up those three notes twice then we're going to go up four from D and play two thumbs play two G's let's have a go see if we can do that second phrase right off two three second phrase. Our first phrase up from C, our second phrase up from D. Let's put them two, those two phrases together. So up three from C, up three, up four, up three from D, up three from D, up four from D. After three, two, three, up four, three from D, four from D. Good, one more time. Two, three, Four. Up three from D. Up four from D. 
you'll be glad and probably to, uh, pleased and relieved to hear that the third phrase is the same as the first. So we're going to go up from the C again. After three, two, three. Oh, sorry. Okay, so we're going up from C, up from D, and then up from C. Okay, so the first phrase is up from C, second phrase is up from D, third phrase is up from C. Let's go for it. That's goodness me, that's nearly all of the first part, part done. After three, one, two, three. So up three from C, up three from C, up four from C, up three from D, three from D, four from D, three from C, three from C, up four from C. After three. One, two, three. Good. One more time for good luck. One, two, three. now. Again, very linear. We're going up and then we're going down. Okay, so three, two, one from D now. We're going to go up those three, cross under with our second and our thumb to the G and the A, but turn around at the top, put your thumb back onto the F, come down those three, but add on a fourth on the C. So you're coming down the same notes using the same fingering. back, swap your third finger onto that C and you're ready to go back and return to the start of the tune. Okay, that's it. That's your first part. Very straightforward tune this one. Let's go for all of that first part. After three, a nice steady piece. Pace, pace, sorry. One, two, three. Up three, up three, up four. you repeat that part after three. One, two, three. slow down if you need to okay let's go on to the second part though I'm gonna play it to you twice through so you can get it in your head about our first little bit we're going to start with our third and C second and E and our thumb is going to get ready to go on the A there okay you could place it on but I just find it a little bit kind of complicated to kind of hold on to that I, I prefer being a little bit more free for this bit because I'm going to play my C E and as I play that C again then I place the A on so we're going C E Let's try that. Now, for this bit, I'm going to count the quavers. 
okay, the eighth notes. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's some kind of curious little kind of pauses in this that I want you to be able to kind of hear and identify. So I'm going to count the one, two, three, two, two, threes, one, two, three, two, two, three, yeah? So for this bit, I'm going to count in and I'm going to play it. Have a listen. One, two, three. Let's see if we can get that. One, two, three. Again, so I'm counting quavers in this time. One, two, three. Lovely. Next bit, three, two, one, up from E, E, F, G. Okay. Now, for the counting for this bit, I'm going to count one, two, three, one. Okay. So there's some curious rhythms going here. Okay, you've got to kind of count the gaps as it is. After one, two, three, one, remember. One, two, three, one. Okay, so I'll shout out that one, and after I shout out that one, I want you to play up, okay? One, two, three, one. Yay! Let's put those two bits together. Are you ready? I'm gonna count up to, so after three, you play the first bit. Second phrase, you have to play it after the one, okay? Um, one, two, three. One, two, three, one. Yeah, let's go for it again. One, two, three. One, two, three, one. Up from D. Good, lovely. Next bit, we're going to go up three from D. We're going to do another F, and then we're going to play down from F to D. So it means you've got three Fs in a row there. One, as you're coming up from the D, E, F, an extra F here, and now going down the same three notes. We're going to end with a G. Have a listen to that. D, E, F, 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 E, D, G. Okay, I'm going to count one, two, three, one. Okay, you ready? One, two, three, one. Yeah, let's go for it again. One, two, three, one. On. So this is what we have so far. We have Okay, let's see if we can get that going together. After three. One, two, three. because there's some rhythm things to do with putting it together as well. It's got to be the same. C, E, C, A. Up from E again. Up from D again. With the extra F. But instead of going to the G, you just play a C. Okay, so it's the same, except instead of going to the G, you add on a C with your fourth finger. Let's try that after three. One, two, three. out when you put these two bits together okay because so far we've had counts of one two three up one two three up but here this G is going one two three straight in one two three up one two three up and the same in the repeat one two three straight in okay so you've got to watch out so halfway through that the end of phrase two and at the end of the part when you're going back in, you're going to be counting for one, two, three, one, and straight in. Okay? Some curious things going on there. Okay? Got to watch out that you don't end up um, adding kind of half beats on and stuff. Let's see if we can play all that together. So the first time you end in the G, second time you end in the C. After three. One, two, three.
feet in the sea. One, two, three. Okay, can you remember your first part? We had up twice from the C, up three notes, up four from the C, up three from D, three from D, four from D, three from C, three from C, up four from C. Then you had your five notes, remember, so we split it into three and two, so up three from D, cross under to G, A, come back down to C. Okay, remember, pause, rewind if you need to go back and look at parts. Cool. Let's even go for the full melody. That didn't take as long. I'm gonna count just kind of standard one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, so let's have a look at some left hand. Okay, so I have a nice kind of little pattern. Amanda, you might have realized by now that I'm sometimes into these kind of little left hand patterns, kind of progressive things that happen. And this tune is no, <laughs> it's kind of very similar to be honest. It's this kind of gradual, we've got this kind of idea of the drone, okay? This is a kind of a gaita, it's a type of bagpipe. Um, so I like my drones, my pipe tunes. Have a listen to how the first part goes with the left hand. version if you're looking at your easier version of left hand you'll see that that C is what is notated in your bass clef so that's the easier version okay so in fact let's have a go and let's see if we can just kind of let's see if we can just kind of get that C in to start with then we'll add in the rest of them okay you've got if you think about this tune each phrase has up three up three and up four and two ending notes so it's kind of divided into kind of four set like little kind of smaller bits if you know what i mean not sure if that kind of makes sense to you it makes sense in my head and um, it's how i remember tunes you know what i mean patterns i've spoken about that before in my workshops so our left hand is going to go with the middle of our kind of bits that are going up so we have our first bit then this is our second grouping here and that's where our left hand is going to go it's going to go with the second grouping have a listen Let's see if we can get it in with our second grouping. Our second grouping is a group of three. 
We're going to play the C with the first note and with the third note. So that's with the C and the E, with the note that our third finger is playing and our thumb is playing. Have a listen. With the C, with the E. So with the first note and the third note. See if you can fit that in. After three. One, two, three. Good, stay in that C and use exactly the same pattern for the second phrase. So this time it's gonna go with the D and the F of the second kind of bar, yeah? Second grouping. After three, let's go for that. One, two, three. Great, one more time. One, two, three. The third phrase is the same as the first. So it's going to go with the C and the E in the second grouping. One, two, three. in two more C's okay when you play your double note I want you to play the C's as well okay so let's say if we can get all of those three phrases and if you can get all those C's in so it's coming with the second grouping with the first note and with the third then with the last with the double notes at the end okay same with the second phrase same order same with the third phrase Go for it, see if you can get that. Then we'll add the kind of um, uh, additional note on top of it. After three. One, two, three. And C, 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 C. Good. Reset. That's a simplified version. We're going to do the main version in a second. After three. One, two, three. I like to use my second finger for that. My bass strings are quite close together. You might be more comfortable using your third finger, but that's up to you. We're going to make the first lot of C's a, G, a C fifth, so a C and a G. The second lot, we're going to move our thumb up and it's going to be a C sixth, so it'll be a C and an A. Okay, so therefore our first phrase is now going to sound like this. C fifth, C and A, so that's the C sixth. Okay, so fifth, sixth on our first phrase. Add that in if you can. You ready? One, two, three. And sixth. Good. One more time. One, two, three. So C fifth. C and A. Great. Our second phrase, we're going to start in the C and A. That's C sixth. Then we're going to make it a C7, so that's our C and our B, so our thumb's moved up again. So we have C and A, and C and B. Now I tend to change my bottom finger at that point, sometimes using my third finger, sometimes using my fourth finger. Up to you. 
Okay, let's try that second phrase in. C and A. One, two, three. C and B. One more time. What C and A remember? One, two, three. C and B. Good. Third phrase, same as the first. So you're back to your C and G and your C and A. Okay? One, two, three. Good work. Okay, so you have your first, your second, and your third. C and G, C and A for the first. C and A, C and B for the second. C and G, and C and A. Okay, you need to kind of be careful at some point. Just if they kind of consider it damping a little bit, just more with the C, I kind of like to kind of damp that a little bit. You might fancy doing that. My gut strings don't tend to ring on, but your harp it might, so just be aware of that. Let's go for phrases one, two, and three with the left hand then. One, two, three. C and G. C and A. C and A. Our final phrase. One, two, three. Great. So remember our fourth phrase, our final phrase. We had the C's with the G here and with the last C. Okay. We're going to go straight to a C and a B for this one. So it's going to be a C7. So C and B with the G's, and then return to a C fifth to finish off. Let's try that. One, two, three. Alright, that's all your first part left hand. Let's go for all that twice. Remember, pause, rewind, go slower if you want, using the wee kind of cog function on YouTube. After three, C and G. One, two, Three. C and A. C and B. Got the C and G. C and A. C and B. C and G again. Our second part, sorry, had da da da. Okay, I'm gonna play you the left hand with this bit for just now. Whoa. So, second part, I'm gonna play you the left hand. And that's because I have to do some kind of considerate damping. I've spoken about those in work not in workshops before. So we're starting off with an F octave, then going down to an E, a G, and a C. Okay, so we have F, E, G, C. F, E, G, C. And I'm splitting these octaves. It's gonna be this rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three. So I'm going one, two, three. Okay, so that thumb has that syncopated feel, the same rhythm actually that we had in our first part, but we're using it on the split octaves now. So have a listen how that's going to work with our first one. Remember our C, E, C is the anachrysis. So the first beat really is that A. One, two, three, and that's where our F octave comes. F octave comes in with the first long note with the A. 
So our left hand, I guess, is coming with the kind of last note of these kind of little groupings, okay? Have a listen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's try it together. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's go for it again. One, two, three. With that G, we're going to have our E split. One, two, three. Let's try that. I'm going to go one, two, three. Yep. Yeah. Because remember, remember those kind of lovely little squealing noises that I'm doing for so you can get rid of them right there. One, two, three. Yep. Yeah. Split E, two, three. Okay, so split E. One, two, three. Yep. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. Yep. Yeah. Let's put those two together. So we've got our F octave and our E octave. One, two, three. One, two, three. E, two, three. Oh, good. Now our G octave is going to come with the first F and with the second F. So it'll sound like this with the F, with the F, then you're coming down. And with the G, you have your C. Okay, so I popped two octaves there and we had our G. G split with the F. Count one, two, three, yep, okay. One, two, three, yep. G and C. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three, yep. One, two, three. Good. Let's try and see if we can get all of that. So F, E, G, C. One, two, three. Sloppy with my E in the middle there. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. G, two, three. Good. Then it's back to the same idea with the F and the E. One, two, three. E, two, three. Yep. And this time, instead of splitting the G to kind of bring it round to the end of the tune, I'm going to play two G's octaves like that. So that's harking back to what we had with the rhythm, the block chords before. So we're going to have two G octaves with a first F and a C fifth to finish off. Let's try that. I'm going to count one, two, three, yep. Yeah. One, two, three, yep. Yeah. G, G. Oh, dear me. Do that again. Oh. One, two, three, yep. Yeah. So let's try that second line. F, E, block, G, and a C fifth. One, two, three. F, two, three, yep. E, two, three, yep. G's. And C, two, three. Nice. Good, that's all for your second part. Let's go for it. You ready? Remember, pause, rewind if you need to. One, two, three. F. So that's the whole of the arrangement. Okay, now on your music, you'll see that I've kind of given you the kind of first main version. Okay, I've also given you a harmony, which you could play. There's various options. What I like to do with this tune really is to, I'll kind of first play it normally. Then I might play the first part of the octave. Which works really well. Because it's in C major, you're quite low on the harp. So, you know, up in the C, geez, a lot of our tunes that we've been learning have been in this octave. So it's totally fine in your heart to play up there. Okay. So you might try to find the first part, uh, play the first part of the octave. You can layer it up with the harmony that I've given you for the first part as well. And there's also a kind of fun second part that I did. And I showed you an example earlier. And this has a kind of striking thing. And that's to kind of emulate the panzeretta. Now, I hope I'm saying that. So the panzeretta is essentially kind of like a Galician tambourine um, that they use a lot in their dancing when they dance these tunes 
Um, so it's kind of supposed to um, emulate that. So have a listen to how that fits in with the second part and then I'll take you through it. So have a listen to how that fits in. Um, yeah, I'll give it a go for you. an expert in string striking i know it's a big kind of technique in south american heart player so i'm just going to teach you how what i do um i've not really been taught her, uh, myself but what it's really what i just do is literally strike the harp with i keep all four in a row like that and i'm using the back of my nails keeping my wrist nice and loose just to fling the strings okay and i'm doing it in around the same place where my melody has been I'm not going up top but you might fancy moving it around a little bit if you want to be fancy but for kind of ease sake I'm just striking it that and a nice loose hand as you're doing it not too strict because otherwise it just sounds stuttered okay now the way that I'm doing that I'm doing it on the one two three so essentially when my thumb is playing the octave there one two three so it's playing the same time as that thumb okay have a go, let's do it nice and slowly. So I'm gonna do it after my F octave and after my E octaves. So just twice, okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. So let's try doing that twice and we'll do it a little bit more up to speed. Ready? One, two, three. to do that in the second time through a play tune so i'll play the first part down there second part up higher and then i'll strike it with a panzerita so yeah good hope you've enjoyed learning that tune um stick around now i will play you it again in front of the fireplace and then we will have a blether section but i'm going to tell you a little bit actually about my harp uh, the harps that i play and yeah cool thank you for learning with me again see you in a second enjoyed uh, learning that uh, Galician tune, uh, the Mirera de Chao. It's such a happy tune, isn't it? I'm sure many of you will notice actually, like most of the tunes that I've been teaching are major keys. Sorry, I've got a squeaky seat here today. Ignore the squeaky seat. Um, yeah, a lot of the tunes I've been teaching you have been in major keys. And quite in general, I think, I think I'm quite a positive, happy person. And I really do like my major tunes. I have to remind myself sometimes that it's okay to play minor ones. 
Um, so yeah, but then, you know, we need to stay happy right now. So I feel that I'm just, you know, I'm doing you guys a good service by teaching you major happy tunes. So I remember to check out the lights um, so that you can see the dance being danced and so that you can hear um, there's a version of Susanna Sevilla and the Gaita player playing it and then some other versions. So I um, also be sure to check out the PDF for just a reminder of the links of the summer courses that I'm teaching at this uh, summer. So that's OSAS, the Ohio Scottish Art School, which comes first, Common Ground on the Hill, which is the second week, and then Somerset Folk Heart Festival. So all three are very different. And yeah, what I'm doing is all quite different as well. It's different styles of teaching. So hopefully you'll be able to sign up for one, two, or you can be a super student and do all three. And geez, all the heart, heart people, um, harp organizers will love you for that. So they will. So I am, um, what else have I been up to this week? Now, I will post as well in the links um, a link to a wee short set of a concert that me and Ron uh, filmed way back at the start of lockdown. And I say filmed, had a bit of fun with the green screen for this one. Not too sure how it worked. See, it was, yeah, I'm not sure how effective it actually was, but you know what, it was a little bit of fun. And it was at the start of all these collab videos when we were still learning how to do it. So it looks like we're playing together, but we were totally recording it independently. So yeah, not sure it totally worked, but you know what? Um, it was a nice challenge to do. So I play a wee solo number and then there's a, a few sets together. So hopefully you'll be able to check that out. Um, it was um, filmed for our Austrian agent, Hazzy. Now he has a Go GoFundMe actually, so um, to help his promotions company who are great at bringing Scottish and Irish uh, artists over to tour Austria. They're great tours those. So please do consider supporting him if you watch the video by making a wee donation. Um, what else? Um, oh, now I'm going to be sending out a newsletter myself this week. So if you want to sign up to my actual normal non-harp at home newsletter, this is my website. Um, it's going to kind of just be, I think, kind of seeing what I'm now up to um, and giving an update on what was to be because right now I'm supposed to be in Australia and well tomorrow I would have been heading off to Japan but it's okay all these things are happening next year so it's okay it's good and I'm getting to do these workshops and spend time with yourselves so um, I promised actually I said on the at the end of the talk there that I'd talk a little bit about my harp so I play a Scottish harp um, this harp is made by Starfish Designs and Starfish are uh, luthiers, they're harp makers who are based in the Highlands in a, a place called Balahulish, which is just a little bit south of, North, of Fort William. Now, if you ever want to visit a harp makers in Scotland, geez, oh, come on holiday and visit Starfish because I swear the journey that that takes, um, like I'll go and see them a few times a year. It only normally takes around two hours to drive up to them. But it's the most stunning journey ever. Honestly, you go past Loch Lomond. This is tourist hotspots. Past Loch Lomond, you go across Rarach Moor, which is just stunning. That's where Skyfall, James Bond Skyfall was filmed at Rarach Moor. Um, you then pass through Glencoe, which of course is historic itself. And then you pass the area where um, Hagrid's cottage was filmed. Um, for Harry Potter, um, honestly, it's just the most stunning area ever, all just in the doorstep of Starfish Hearts. So if you ever come to Scotland, do consider going to visit them. But this model of heart that I play is called the Glenelg. Um, I've been playing Starfish Hearts really ever since I bought my own harp. Um, I always remember, even back to when I first started to play the harp, I remember being at Face Ross, my first ever time learning harp, and overhearing some of the kids in the Clarstock class say that starfish hearts were the best. I wanted the best. So I was really naughty actually. Uh, we were halfway through learning a tune and I decided that I didn't like the harp that I was given. I wanted the starfish that was next to me, the beautiful white looking starfish. It was in, in maple, it was a stunning looking little, it must have been a student harp, student class. So I flipped all my levers up and down and just put my hand up and went, miss my harp's out of tune, my harp's out of tune. And they let me move to the starfish next door. And that was the end of that. I'm not going to tell you who the tutors were for that. Um, you'll certainly know one of them. <laughs> um, ask me in person if you ever see me and I'll let you in on that secret. Um, so ever since then, I've been obsessed with Starfish Hearts. I remember seeing them once at um, the Highland Heart Festival. 
and getting some photos and having them on my wall. That was the harp I wanted to, to own. And I eventually did. When I was 16 years old, I finally got my own Starfish Glencoe. It was maple. It was gorgeous. Um, and I've been playing them ever since. Um, I was unfortunately involved in a car crash when in my last, just um, after after I graduated university or still when I, no, when I was still at university um, and the harp got damaged a little bit so I managed to get some funding um, to get a new one and yeah and this current model that I play I actually have two exactly the same as the Glenelg and it's very similar to their what was their top model the Glencoe named after Glencoe um, and what they've actually done is they've hollowed out parts all the way through here so that it's really lightweight um, I do a lot of flying. I fly it with it in a flight case. This is a picture of it in its flight case. Um, and that means that it weighs in the flight case less than 20 kilos. I think that means 50 pounds. I'm not very good at US measurements. But you know that key number or key weight that you need to get to for flying with airlines? It's just under that. So honestly, they wave it on now at the airports, especially at Glasgow. They're so used to seeing us. In fact, I'm first name in terms of the guy um, at um, baggage control. Um, but yeah, they're so used to There's quite a lot of us who fly out of Glasgow airport who play them. So they're really used to them. So they're great instruments. Um, it's got strong, kind of mid-tension. <laughs> Yeah, I just love it. I've got some quite unusual levers on it. I have Delacour levers. Um, these, unfortunately, are very hard to get a hold of now. They are so fast. I love because at the end of the tune, right, so say if I'm an A major, and I'm like, right, tune's done, and there we go. I can put them down really fast. But it means that I can put them up really fast and I can do two at once and stuff. It's re they're really, really fast. I prefer them to the Kamak levers because they are actually faster in Kamak, but they're really hard to get a hold of, so much so that Starfish have had to stop offering them, sadly. Um, so they are great. A lot of people ask me, though, about Starfish, how I deal with this. I never knew this was a thing. I only realised it was different when I went to Starfish, or went to Stum Somerset Heart Festival and I brought my Starfish with me. And everyone was like, oh my goodness, how do you deal with that? And it's not really an issue. The reason it's done is because if it was all on one straight line, the heart would have to be a lot taller just for the, I don't know, physics of it. I'm not too sure. Um, but when do you ever need to switch your E and F up in the middle of a piece at the same time? It's never an issue. Um, it's just totally normal for me. And anyone who's I've found who've even moved to Starfish have never found it an issue. So great harps. The other thing I really like about Starfish is they really listen to us as um, musicians. Um, they've kind of got a little bit of a kind of collab going on with um, Dusty Strings Harp with Ray and Sue. Um, and they've, <laughs> they've allowed their harps to come with uh, the Dusty Strings um, pickup system. So they are good buddies, actually, the bunch of them. So I have a Dusty Strings pickup in it. So any live gigs you see, that's what I'll be using with it. Brilliant system. Highly recommend it if you're looking for a pickup for your harp. Um, the other thing is that um, you'll often see me standing at gigs. And Starfish have, have uh, created this stand that their harp can clip into. It's really only designed for starfish. I'm not sure if it will work in other harps. Um, I have a seated stand which raises it slightly. So that's what my harp's on to now. I'll show you. Ugh, excuse me. Cousin Cleo's here. So this is the seated one. Okay, and the great thing is, is it comes to bits. So I'll show you. Like this. So lap packs in your suitcase or your handbag even or even your heart pocket actually I think it fits in there so great thing that um, I've been using that a lot actually just now when I've been teaching so I can sit in a more comfortable chair other than a little stool um, but they also do a standing version and this is my standing stand so it just clips in so I'll show you maybe I'll just see if you can do it this is, I'm not sure if this will be able to you'll be able to see this because the camera's static but it just slots in. I don't think you can see that. I'll maybe lift it up in a second. Can I get it in? There you go. Can you see that? You see how it's slotted in? So, and then that means it's standing. I can stand and play. The other great thing I've discovered about this is, and this is, this is such a, this is a typical kind of Rachel thing. So a while ago, I had a bit of an accident with my harp. Um, I managed to wreck the bass. 
I caught it on a door lint when I really, I don't know what I was doing. Moving far too fast is probably what I was doing. So I had to get a new base for my harp. Now the harp at the time, it's not, wasn't actually this one, it was the other one that I have in the corner. I have two exactly the same. Um, if you know me, if you follow my, me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see that um, quite often my, my suitcases and harp will go missing. I do a lot of air travel. Um, and I'm quite used to suitcases being late and things. So as a result, I have a second harp just in case that happens. Because there has been times when I've arrived home and I've had another gig and I need a harp and my harp is like, I don't know, still in Amsterdam. So yeah, I have two harps. So my harp that's over there was the first Glenelg that I owned and it was number 1000, the thousandth harp that Starfish made. Um, and yeah, I wrote the base of it. So I asked them if they could put it together. You can just still see the crack there. So they glued it back together. They gave me a new one. They glued it back together. Actually, see those circles? That's how it's hollowed out inside. That's a good example of that. Um, so I have this, which normally, and during these films, because I've been popping it back up there, it resides up there. Um, but I've discovered, and this is a great discovery, um, because, well, I'm not gigging just now. This stand is normally packed flat. It comes to pieces as well. But I discovered that I can put this in there. I can slot it in like you would with a harp. And look, it's a coffee table. I've legit been using this when I've been doing my Zoom lessons. I have it beside my seat and beside my laptop, my laptop on the towel table. And then this is down below me. And yeah, I have my coffee or my cup of tea on my starfish coffee table. It's amazing. I sent David at Starfish a photo of it and he was, well, I, I don't know if he was impressed to be honest, but um, he humoured me at least. Um, they're great actually at Starfish. Um, as I say, do get in contact with them if you're ever in Scotland and you're interested in, in trying out their harps and because they don't buy one. Um, Dave Shepton is the owner and there's another harp maker called Davey. Um, so it's Dave and Davey who make the harps. I kid you not, for, some, for a time there was a third person called David. Dave, Davey and David were the heart makers. God, it was very confusing. <laughs> um, at least they were like called themselves Dave, Davey and David, not the three Daves and stuff, but aye. So there you go. So that's my heart with starfishes. Um, totally love them. Um, they are normally at the Edinburgh Heart Festival. Um, I'm gonna try and bring my ones at least to, um, probably to Somerset next year if I go to Somerset. Um, and yeah maybe to the seattle heart festival at some point as well i'm going to be teaching at the seattle online in october as well so i there you go that's all about starfish and about my starfish a eh, coffee table which is a result of lockdown um yeah next week um isn't our last harp at home remember i was saying i'm going to do one more for this workshop i'm not too sure i know i might do another match tune next week not sure. I don't know what I'm going to teach. I'm going to have to kind of research some tunes. Maybe a new one to me as well, which is always quite good if I get to learn something new as well. Just a few days ahead of yourselves. Um, and yeah, we'll maybe see if we can get a special guest on next week as well. Um, I've got a new iPad arriving actually, so um, I'll be able to have better Zoom uh, video calls of folks. So we might investigate that. But anyway, Hope you enjoy learning that Munera and I will see you next week. <laughs>